Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Gaurav and this is Neat Designs and in today's episode we are going to learn how to create this awesome cool neon effect using HTML and CSS. So without any further ado, let's get started. So as you can see in my text editor, I have this markup.html file and in that file I have already created this markup. So linked our CSS file and in body we have this h1 with a class of neon effect which says Neat Designs which is the greatest YouTube channel in the world right now. Ah, uh, just kidding guys. <laughs> and that's all we required in the markup. So let's see how it looks in the browser right now. So we have got this H1 which says need designs. So let's turn this into awesome neon effect with our CSS. So I am here in styles.css and I am importing a font from Google fonts called Sacramento. So let's start with the body and let's reset the default margin of the body by saying margin 0 and let's say height 100 vh so it will occupy full height of the browser okay and let's display it as a flex and then justify content to center and align items to center as well to center that headline in the center of the page let's set the background to 1b 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 which is a blackish color okay and let's set the font family to that sacramento font and sans serif as our fallback font sacramento okay and let's set the color to white so we can see that headline as you can see we got that beautiful font okay so now uh, let's target that neon effect which is the h1 element and let's remove the default margin of it as we don't need it and let's set the font size to 100 pixels now and font weight to normal and let's add a border around that text so let's say border and instead of uh, using the fixed values like pixels uh, i'm going to use amps which is relative to the font size uh, so let me show you so now for the border let's say 0.03 amp okay and solid and white for the color okay so as you can see that text got the border around it and in case if we increase the font size in the future so first of all let's open the inspector here okay and let's see how much border it got so uh, right now it has a uh, three pixels of border okay and if we increase the font size to do, let's say 200 pixels also that border gets bigger okay so as you can see now it got six pixels of border around it okay so that's the point of using the amps instead of fixed values like pixels. Similarly, let's add a border radius of 0.4m. Okay, and let's add a padding using the same technique. So let's say 4m, 0.4m and let's reset the font size to 100 pixels. Okay, so now let's add our today's secret sauce, which is text shadow. So let's say text dash shadow. So let me explain a little bit about text shadow. So let me add a text shadow of four pixels, four pixels and zero pixels and to color let's add white. Okay. So uh, let me explain what those values are here. So this first value is the horizontal offset of the shadow. So the positive means the shadow will be on the right of the text and a negative offset will put the shadow on the left of that text. So if I increase this value, let's say 14 pixels, as you can see that shadow moves to the right of that text. And if I make this to negative 14 pixels, that shadow will move to the left of the text. Let me change the color to green so we can differentiate the shadow from the text itself okay so as you can see if i make this negative 24 that shadow will move 
to its left okay so the second value is the vertical offset of the shadow a negative means the text shadow will be above the text a positive one means the shadow will be below the text okay so here i have added four pixel let me increase this to let's say 34 pixels so as you can see because the value is the positive one that shadow moves to the bottom of that text and if i change this to the negative one the shadow will move to the top of the text okay so the third value is the blur radius which is an optional value uh, you don't have to specify it but if you don't specify it the browser will treat it as zero okay so the higher the number the more blurred the shadow will be so in this case as you can see i have set it to zero that's why we have got this very sharp shadows and if i increase the shadow to let's say five pixels that shadow will be blurred okay and the last value is the color okay so you can use keywords rgbas hsl hex values okay so here i have specified green so let me change this to blue and that shadow turns into blue okay and one more thing is uh, we can specify more than one value by separating them by commas okay so here we can add a comma and we can specify one more value so let's say negative 34 pixels negative 10 pixels and 20 pixels for the blur and then green okay so let's see what we got so as you can see that green shadow is added so let me reduce the blur so we can see it clearly so as you can see that we got these two shadows so that's enough for the explanation uh, let me show you its practical uses and let me show you how to use it for creating a neon effect okay so let me add some shadows here so first one will be 0 for the horizontal, 0 for the vertical, 2 pixel for the blur and for the first color we are going to choose white okay let me add a comma and let me copy this thing and here let's change the blur radius value to 4 pixels okay and let me add another comma and let me paste it few times so I'm going to paste it 6 times so that will be 8 shadows for the total so as you can see we have added bunch of text shadows of white and we got those text shadows okay so now let's start to change some of its values so for the third shadow let me add a blur radius of six pixels and for the color uh, i am going to create a variable here in the root element so let's say root and let me add a variable called neon color so let's use two dashes then the variable name called neon color and let's set that to this bluish tint which has a hex value of 510 and cef and let me use that same color on these shadows some of these shadows okay so i'm going to use it for the fourth fifth sixth seventh and for the eighth one okay so let's use walk keyword and the variable name neon dash color and let me save that nothing really happened because we need to change the blur radius of those values okay so let me randomly increment these blur radius values okay so let me say 15 pixel for the fourth 23 for the fifth one let's say 36 for the sixth 42 pixel for the seventh and let's say 67 pixel for the eighth shadow okay so as you can see we got the blue shadow on our text and we can already see that we got this neon text effect on our text okay so now similar to text shadow let's add some box shadow on our border so let's say box shadow and similarly for the text shadow we can add multiple values to it by using the comma so for the first shadow let's say zero zero three pixels and white for the color and let me copy this and let me paste it five times okay three four and five okay and at the end let's add a semicolon okay so for the second one let's change nothing on it and for the third one let's bump up that blur radius to 33 pixels and for the color let's say wash and let's use our label which is neon color okay and let me copy this 
variable and paste it to rest of the shadow and for the fourth shadow let's change it to 36 and for the fifth let's say 45 pixels and for the last one let's say inset so the shadow will be inside rather than the outside okay so as you can see we got this glow on our border also so this itself is an awesome effect but let's not stop there let's add some animations on it so let's say animation and the animation name will be pulsate animation duration will be 1.5 seconds and it will run infinitely so let's say infinite and let's say alternate okay so that animation will run backward when it's completed okay so now let's use the keyframes so let's say keyframes and let's use that animation name called pulsate and let's add zero percent and for the zero percent i'm going to copy this same text shadows okay so initially it will start from these shadows and let me copy this thing and let me paste it here and let's change the 0% to the 100% okay and in the 100% let's uh, increase the blur radius a bit okay so 5 pixels 9 pixels from 4 pixels 18 from the 6 36 from the 15 okay that's a pretty big jump there and 49 pixels okay 65 from the 36 89 from the 42 that's a very big jump there okay and 140 for the last one okay so we will see that animation so it will start from here and we have incremented the blur radius of it okay okay so let me save this nothing happening what's wrong with that okay we have misspelled the pulsate spinning on the animation property so let's fix that till nothing happening okay so let me see oh i have messed up one more time here so let me add add keyframes because we have to use the add keyword here so as you can see our neon effect is now animating beautiful so let me show you one more thing here so we have used a variable called neon color and in case if you want to change the color here uh, we can do it very easily so let me comment out this and paste it the same here and for the color uh, let's change that blue to this pinkish color so let's say bc 13 fe and if we save that we will get the pink neon effect okay so that's the advantage of css variables we need to change just one value and wherever we have used that variable will get that effect okay so that's it friends we have learned how to create this awesome cool neon effect with html and css so I hope you have really enjoyed this video and learned something from it and if you really do please click on that like button. Also subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on my future videos and please support this channel on the patreon.com so I can make more videos like this. So the link is in the description below so please do support there. So that's been it until my next video goodbye.